We're going to tackle a 1D kinematics problem, and yes, that's a terrible pun because this is a football problem. The Virginia Tech Hokies are playing football against the UVA Cavaliers. The Cavaliers throw a pass, which is intercepted by one of our Hokies. Now, initially, that Hokie is at rest, but as soon as he catches the ball, he runs to the right with a constant acceleration of 2 meters per second squared. At the same time, a Cavalier is running toward the Hokie at a steady rate of five meters per second. And at the moment when the Hokie catches the ball, these two players are seven meters apart. So the question is, if both players run toward each other, when and where will they meet? Whenever we wanna solve a physics problem, the first thing we should do is to make sure that we actually understand the problem at hand. And one really effective way to do that is to draw a picture. So I'm gonna draw a picture of the Hokie just as he catches the ball. So we know that his initial velocity is zero meters per second. So I wrote here VI standing for V initial of the Hokie. Okay, that's what that H stands for. So these subscripts are always telling us information about this variable. So this is initial velocity for the Hokie is zero meters per second. And I know that he accelerates to the right at two meters per second squared. So I need to somehow tell the problem that this two meters per second squared is to the right. In order to do that, I need to create a coordinate system. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say that my coordinate system points to the right. So I'll say that positive X points to the right and where the Hokie is initially, I'm gonna call the X equals zero position. So since the coordinate system points to the right and he accelerates to the right, his acceleration is gonna be positive. I also know that his initial position, so x initial for the Hokie, is zero meters because he is right there on top of the origin, so he's at zero meters away from the origin. Okay, similarly, now I'm going to draw the Cavalier. So here's the Cavalier, and the Cavalier is traveling toward the Hokie at five meters per second. Now, since this five meters per second is going to the left, but my positive axis points to the right, then I know that the Cavalier's initial velocity is actually minus five meters per second, okay? Because he's going in the opposite direction of the coordinate system. And I also know that he's traveling at a constant speed, so his acceleration is zero meters per second squared. And his initial position is the distance he is away from this origin. So we know that initially he's seven meters from the Hokie, which means he's also seven meters from the origin. So I know his initial position is seven meters. Now in this problem, we're asking where and when will they meet? So what that's trying to tell you is that at some point, these two players are going to be at the same location. Now in physics, what that means is they're going to be at the same position and same in math just means equal. So we know that at some point, these two players will have the same position at the same time. Okay, so that's really what we're looking for. So at some point we wanna say, hey, I want the final position of the Hokie to be exactly the same as the final position of the Cavalier. That's actually kind of telling us where we're going. So now we can devise a plan of how we're gonna do this problem. And I know that if I want to say that the two positions are equal, all I have to do is write a position function for the Hokie and write a position function for the Cavalier and set those things equal to each other. And that will tell me when that happens and I can go back and figure out where that happened. All right, so let's go ahead and look at the Hokie first. And we're gonna use our generic kinematic equation for constant acceleration and that's X final of the Hokie equals the Hokie's initial position, xi for the Hokie, plus the Hokie's initial velocity times the time duration of, um, of this travel, plus one half the acceleration of the Hokie times the time squared. Okay, 
Now looking at this information that I have, I know that the initial position of the hokey is zero, right? Because he starts right at the origin. So this term actually goes away. And I also know that his initial velocity is zero. So zero times delta t is zero. And I have a term left, which is one half acceleration of the hokey times delta t squared. So right now I say, oh, the final position for the hokey is just going to be one half times the acceleration of the hokey times the time of travel squared. I have to do the same thing for this cavalier. So again, I start with my generic equation. So x final for the cavalier is x initial for the cavalier plus v initial for the cavalier times delta t plus one half times acceleration of the cavalier times delta t squared. In this case, the initial position is seven meters, so I have to leave that in, that doesn't go away. And I know my initial velocity for the cavalier is minus five meters per second, so that doesn't go away either. But I know that um, this cavalier has no acceleration, so one half times zero times delta t, zero, so that whole term drops off. So now we have our two equations for position, and we just have to set them equal to each other. So we have the equation for the position of the hokey and the equation for the position of the cavalier. We know that at some point, these two players have to be at the same position at the same time. So what I'm going to say is we know that at some time, x final of the hokey has to equal x final of the cavalier. Now, this doesn't mean that they traveled the same distance. It just means that they're at the same location. So that's an important distinction between x final and delta x. Okay, so these positions are measured from the origin. So this x final of the hokey is measured from the origin, and this x final of the Cavalier is also measured from the origin. So what we're going to do is plug in these equations. So for the hokey, it's just one half acceleration of the hokey times delta t squared. Right, so that just came from up here. And for the cavalier, we're going to plug in this. It's the initial position of the cavalier plus the initial velocity of the cavalier times the time. And we'll go ahead and put in some numbers here. So this is 1 half times 2 meters per second squared times delta t squared equals 7 meters plus the initial velocity of the cavalier was minus 5 meters per second times delta t. Here I have 1 half times 2, so I'm just left with 1 meter per second squared times delta t squared equals 7 meters minus 5 meters per second times delta t. Here I have a delta t squared, a delta t, and a constant. So how in the world am I going to solve this equation for delta t? Well, hopefully this will look like a quadratic formula to you. So you can see, yeah, this is our a term, this is our b term, and this is our c term. But we have to first get it all on one side. So we have 1 meter per second squared times delta t squared. And then I end up with a plus 5 meters per second times delta t minus 7 meters equals 0. So from here, I can solve the quadratic, and I get two solutions. I get one solution that's minus 6.14 seconds, and I get a second solution that's 1.14 seconds. Now, of course, we can have a time that's negative, right? We can't go backwards in time, so we know that it's not this one. And so this is the delta t that we're going to use. All right, so we know that these two players meet at 1.14 seconds. All right, so let's go ahead and plug in where they will meet. If I use this Hokies equation, I know that xf for the Hokies has to equal 1 half times 2 meters per second squared times that time squared, which is 1.14 seconds squared. And my seconds squared cancel out, and 
I'm left with 1.3 meters. That's where the hokey is. The hokey is at 1.3 meters. So let's just double check that that's also where the cavalier is. So the cavalier is x final equals x initial, which was 7 meters, plus a negative 5 meters per second times 1.14 seconds. And the seconds cancel out. And it turns out that the x final for the cavalier is also 1.3 meters. So that's good. They should be at the same location. So that was one check that we ended up with them both being at 1.3 meters away. We also saw that our units worked out. Um, in both cases, we got meters. Let's see if we can make sense of that, though. So here is the hokey, right? Here is the cavalier. The cavalier started seven meters away, and they both met 1.3 meters from the origin, right? So here is the origin at x equals zero. So what that means is, even though they met at the same location, the Hokie traveled a very small distance and the Cavalier traveled a huge distance. And that sort of makes sense because they met only 1.14 seconds into this whole thing. And the Virginia Tech Hokie started at an initial velocity of zero and was only accelerating at two meters per second squared. So the Virginia Tech Hokie never really got going very fast, but the Cavalier was traveling at five meters per second. And so it traveled for over a second. So it should have traveled more than five meters. So that's another check that this sort of works with what our intuition says. So whenever you do a physics problem, you're never done when you get the answer. You should always think about, okay, did the units match? Can I make sense of it? And in this case, we were able to solve the X final for both the Hokie and the Cavalier, and we made sure that those two values matched.